1 Corinthians chapter number 10, <clears throat> beginning at verse number 14. Thank you, Caleb. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. And I speak to sensitive people. Judge for yourselves what I say. It is not the cup, is it not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks and, and, and excuse me, let's go back. Participation. Uh, let's go back. I messed it up. It's not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ. And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf. We who are many are one body. For we all share the one loaf. Consider the people of Israel. They do those who do not those who eat the sacrifices, participate in the altar. Do I mean then that food sacrifice is an idol, is anything, or that an idol is anything? No, but the sacrifices of pagans are often offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. Hmm. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are you trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Go back for me, Caleb, one time. Thank you. Look at this. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. For the next few minutes, I want to preach about at the table. Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell your neighbor at the table. Spirit of living God, we thank you for your word. Your word is true. Hide me behind the veil. Anoint my mind, my heart, my spirit, and I will proclaim that and that only you would have me to proclaim. Have your way in this place. I need you to set it off in this place. I need an encounter with you. Rock this church from door to door and from corner to corner, from pew to pew. Have your way. We come against every distraction, everything that was distracted up from hearing your word. And the table. And the table. Door keepers, you may be seated. In the presence of God. We are exactly one week away from my favorite religious holiday. Amen. You may have thought that it would be Christmas. <laughs> but Christmas is not my favorite holiday. Although it's not my favorite holiday, it's definitely my wife's favorite holiday. She began playing Christmas music in October. Decorating the house sometime before Thanksgiving. No, no, no. Hey, all right. I already will. You wait to after Thanksgiving. One day, Brother Marcus, I got off work, and she got off early. I said, what you doing? What? She called me. I said, what you doing? Oh, I'm just shopping. They said, this is just shopping. Came to the house. Living room lit up, tree up. Garden everywhere, lights everywhere. So that makes her happy. I love it. Thank you. So Christmas is not my favorite holiday. And you... My second favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. And why Thanksgiving is my second favorite holiday, because the truth of the matter is every day should be a day of Thanksgiving. Amen. You should thank God every day that you got a roof over your head, food on your table, clothes on your back, 
You should thank God every day that you got family and friends. Yeah. You should thank God every day as the old folks would say, a reasonable portion yeah. of your health and strength. You don't have to wait till a Thursday in November to give God thanks. Every day should be a day. Make no doubt about it, my favorite religious holiday is what I call not Easter, but Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Amen. To celebrate the Son of God, yes. the only king in history yes. that died and was buried and rose the third day for my salvation. Yes. That alone makes my soul rejoice. Yes. I love Resurrection Sunday so much that when I was a bachelor, I began a tradition on Resurrection Sunday evening. I took on the task of hosting Resurrection Sunday dinner. Uh -huh. Jesus. And possibly 25 of my family members and friends Come over, we eat in fellowship. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, after Lady C and I dated for some time, then I introduced her to my family, her and Bill, at Resurrection Dinner. You remember that? That's mm -hmm. when Jeremy and I were roommates. And Jeremy and Jackie would tell you that I would stay up all Saturday day. At night, cooking the entire meal. All right. I would go to bed around 2 a.m., uh -huh. Resurrection Sunday morning, get about three hours of sleep, and come back here and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. At that time, at 8 o'clock in the morning. But thank God, I got a soul made now. He <laughs> makes it here. Lady C and I did all the cooking last year. Mm -hmm. And all we did not cook, we prepped for Jackie, Jacqueline, and Grandma to go to our house after the first service to put it in the oven. All right. That's all right. But last year, I learned my lesson. Doing all that cooking and staying up in Elberton on Resurrection Sunday, my glucose levels dropped. Because I was doing too much while I was preaching, you know, cooking and all that. So I learned my lesson. I'm not doing that this year. I'm not cooking the whole meal this year. We're going to cook some things. But these other people don't have to bring a dish. Not that I'm getting older, but it is a little different than the energy that I had in my 20s versus my 30s. Junior was talking in the car with us on Sunday. And when I was in my teens and my 20 preaching, I would climb over pews and <laughs> yell about 15 times. I'm going to yell one time. If you don't get it in, that's it. I'm sitting down. <laughs> We're changing it up this year. And we have already planned the menu. Justin, right. you can come over and get a plate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I think he said, I will. Yo. <laughs> Let us see. Is cooking her famous greens, right. her right. famous yams. Right. I'm cooking the ham. I'm baking the ham. I'm, I'm gonna make up the macaroni and cheese for Jack and them to put in the oven on Resurrection Sunday. I'm gonna cook the squash casserole. We're gonna have fried chicken, grilled chicken, potato salad, green beans, black eyed peas, lima beans, stewed tomatoes, pound cake, chocolate cake, banana pudding, peach cobbler, sweet tea, lemonade and water. Everything you need and anything you want will be at the table. At the table. Somebody shout at the table. Now, there's no test without context that will allow me to put 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, verses 14 through 22 in its proper setting. There are two, some may consider three audience or rituals that Jesus commanded believers to participate in because of our relationship with him. Amen. 
and the benefits we will receive by participating in these ordinances. Those two are baptism and communion. Some consider foot washing as the third. Let us bring our attention to communion. Yes, yes. It is impossible to accurately discuss communion without discussing Passover. Yes, Jesus. Passover was the renewal of the old covenant, but communion is the renewal renewal of the new covenant. Yes, yes. Passover was the meal that the Jews ate in Egypt the night. Somebody shout night. night. Say it again. Night. night. One more time. Night. Say it again. Night. That's important. I'm coming back. Right. Passover is the meal that the Egyptian ate, excuse me, that Israelites ate in Egypt the night the death angel came. Wow. Yeah. They were to take a lamb and roast it and eat it. But with the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Look, 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 look. They could eat the lamb. That's important. They could eat the lamb, but with the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood. They had to put it on their doorposts. Because at midnight, the death angel was going to come through. But when the death angel see the blood, he will pass over that particular house. Amen. So that's the meal yes. that they had. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Passover meal. Yes. The lamb. The lamb. Roasted and eaten. Yes. But with the blood of the lamb. Yes. When the devil yes. angel see the blood, the devil angel will pass over. Yes. That particular house. And they ate that meal at night. Somebody shout at night. Somebody shout at night. One more time. And on the night. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Before Jesus was crucified. Come on. Come on, He ate the Passover feast. Y'all hear me? He sat at the table with the twelve apostles. And he ate mm -hmm. the Passover Amen. meal. Amen. And guess what was at the table? <laughs> Perhaps lamb, uh -huh. but without doubt, bread yeah. and wine. Yeah. You may not think that that is enough food, bread and wine, on the table. However, let me tell you something. Jesus himself is the Passover meal. Yes. Mm. Jesus himself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And if Jesus is at the table, yes. and if he himself is the Passover yes. meal, and if he at the table, that's all that I need. Yes. At the table. First Corinthians chapter number five. Verse number seven said, "Purge out therefore the old unleavened, that ye that may be a new lump, yeah. as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, yes. for even Christ, yes. for even Christ, yes. our Passover yes. is sacrificed yes. for us. Yes. Christ Himself yes. was the Passover. Yes. Yes. Somebody shout, Christ is our Passover." So the Israelites ate the meal at night. The Israelites ate the Passover meal at night. And if you will, in the New Testament, the Passover himself was sitting at the table getting ready to partake in the Passover meal. The spiritual is meeting up with the natural. Which brings us to Luke. Chapter number 22, yeah. verse 14 yeah. through 19. Yeah. Since Christ is our Passover, uh -huh. let us look uh -huh. at what he did at the Lord's Supper, uh -huh. which is another name for communion. Yeah. Elder Jones, Luke 22, verses 14 through 19. 
Elder Jones. And when the hour was come, Hallelujah. he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Mm. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, I will not eat, I will not anymore eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. And he took the cup and gave thanks mm -hmm. and said, take this, take this and divide it among yourselves. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Hallelujah. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Keep it right there. I'm going to teach you a little bit, then I'm going to preach. I'm going to do communion. I need you to see why we take communion. Come on. Uh -huh. Teach us. Teach us. Teach us. The bread in communion represents the body of Christ. Yes, yes. Christ's body yes, sir. was broken yes. for us. Yes. Let me get at the table. Yes. You're not going to eat this, but I'm going to touch it. As you can see, he took a loaf of bread. Yes. The Passover. Yes. Jesus himself took the Passover took the loaf of bread and he broke it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Broke it. Yes. He broke the, oh, this the body. Yes, yes. yes. He broke the bread. Yes. My God. He My God. broke the bread. Yes. yes. Isaiah 53, 5 says, he was yes. wounded. Wounded? For our transgression. Yes. 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 He was bruised for our iniquity. Yes, sir. The chastisement of our peace our was peace. upon him. Say that. And with his stripes. Yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes. Yes. Sunday, pick up. Yes. See, some of you going to the doctor yes. before you get prescription drugs. Yes. Get the prescribed word. Yes. Listen, listen, the, the law of the time was if a criminal did wrong, 
you beat them, but don't beat them more than 40 times. Mm -hmm. Beat his body, but don't hit them, don't beat them more than 40 times. It is believed that when they whipped Jesus on that cross, yes. he was bruised by our iniquity. Yes, he, was. he was wounded by our iniquity. Um, the chastisement of our peace was, was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Yes. It is believed. Paul said, and I believe 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 24, Paul said, Paul said, of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes, save one. Yeah. So 40 stripes minus one is 39. Yeah. It is believed that Jesus was beat 39 times. Yes. 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 Amen. He, has, he had 39 stripes mm. on his body. Yes. My God. Yes. And the body that was broken for you, the stripes that I'm going to get on my body, that's going to rip my body apart, 39 stripes. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they are for the healing of the land. Yes, 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 teach us. Yes, teach us. Yes, teach us. Yes. 39 strikes. Yes. Mm. Whatever disease you have. Come on. Oh, I can I can name all of the organs. I know you got the heart, the kidney, and all the lungs. But guess what? I don't care what kind of disease you have. Mm. Jesus was ah. wounded for yes, us. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. The body was broken for us. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. You take a prescription drug, yes. the first person you go to is the doctor. Yes. And they give you medicine. But Jesus said, have you partaken of my body yet? When I did on the cross, yes. the 39 strike that was broken on my body was for your healing. I can heal your disease. Yeah. 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 And the prayer, once you pray over it, that represents Christ's body. They need a prescription drug that you can buy. And the prescription drug don't get down to the pure. But if you get the body, pray it, pray over it. God said, I can heal your body. Yeah. 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 You just take the community just to be taken. But you want to know something. When you eat that bread, you eat your healing. When you eat that bread, your mind is being healed. Your spirit for the next 30 seconds, I'm giving you 30 seconds, I'm giving you 15 seconds. My time is running short. I'm gonna give you 15 seconds. I want you to name out every disease that you got. Name it out. Every disease that you got, name it out. I won't lie either. Next door to the name, name out every disease you got. My great head is. I feel that 
the Red Sea. The only reason God drowned the Egyptians in the Red Sea is because they were covered in the blood. They were on their way to eternity, but God said, I can repeat you in time because of the blood. Some of you are scared of your enemies. You're scared about what people don't do to you. You're scared of the devil. But God said, if you can believe me to take you to heaven, you ought to believe me to bring heaven on earth. I can redeem you. I can kill your enemies because you are covered by the blood. Y'all know I grew up Baptist. And my father's side of the family is holiness, so I went to the holiness church as well. I went to a Methodist college. I went to a Presbyterian seminary. And sometimes on Friday nights, I would go to the churches of God in Christ service. I'm all mixed up in there. My point is, when I went to the holiness church, Anytime the devil showed up, somebody would shout, the blood, 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 the blood. The blood, the blood. See, y'all don't know how to plead the blood. Some of you see the devil and you start crying. No, 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 don't cry. I don't have no power. But when you see the devil coming and you say the blood, the devil got to get back.
However, here's the dilemma in Corinthians that the Corinthians were participating uh -huh. in the Lord's table. That's right. And also they were eating from the table of demons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were eating with people who sacrificed to idol gods. Mm -hmm. They were eating from both tables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are only two tables you can eat from in this world. You can either eat from the Lord's table or the devil, the table of the table of demons. You only have two options. But here's the thing, you can't eat from both tables. Mm. You can't build for God and build for Satan too. You can't serve two masters. What table you gonna eat from? You can't sit at this table and eat at this table on Sunday. Uh -huh. Come on, that you eat the bread and drink the wine. Yeah. And yeah. you drink that and you eat that, you partake of it on Sunday. Yeah. But on Monday or Sunday evening, you go out there and eat with the, from the table of demons. Yeah. You can't serve two. Yeah. And that's what the Corinthians were doing. They were eating from both tables. Now, I'm talking about me personally. I don't eat everybody's cooking. Amen. I eat y'all because I know y'all. But when I go to these other folks' churches and restaurants, I don't eat everybody's cooking. I don't care if, I don't care if your, everybody thinks their grandma and mama can cook. I don't care if you think your mama. I don't know your mama. Your mama got some unclean spirits in this body. I don't eat from everybody. Not only is she nasty, her house is nasty. And why you are eating from an unclean table? And as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. I don't eat from everybody's table. I can't eat from the table of demons and expect God to bless me when I eat from his table. If you eat from the table of demons, expect God to withhold his blessings from you. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, Paul said in verse number 22, are we trying to arouse the Lord jealousy? Are we stronger than he? In other words, he's saying, Paul is saying, if you eat for both tables, you are doing, what, what, what you are doing is, God will chastise you, number yes, one. Yes, and secondly, he will withhold his yes. blessings yes. from you. Yes. If you hopping from table to table, God says, since you hopping, let me withhold my blessing. Because you're not stronger than me. If you eat for both tables, I'll make you sick. I'll make you ill. I'll make you die prematurely. That's the word. I'll show you that later. Because you eat it from both tables. You bring a judgment to yourself. You can't eat from both tables. If God never bless you, you can't never get a break. You can't never get no peace. You need to check yourself. I believe you eat from two tables. When everything you need <laughs> is at the Lord's table. And I feel like preaching Justin and Jaden. I come here to tell somebody. Come on in. Where the table is spread. And the feast of the Lord is going on. Everything you need is at the table. Can you help me preach? Your salvation is at the table. Your healing is at the table. Your money. I'm not going to preach if you sit down and don't go come on with us. Your money is at the table. Your Whatever you need, whatever you need, it's at the table. What? 
that Jesus, he sat down at the table. And when I was studying that for this sermon, Chelsea, I thought about the scripture. Psalms 23, verse number 5. Thy preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. There will be a season in your life that your enemies can't touch you. There will be a season in your life that the devil can't bother you. The only thing he got to do is stand up because it's your season to sit down at the table. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, this is my season to sit down at the table. Yes, God. This morning, yes, Sister Virginia is at the table. 